Hey guys, I'm here to uh, make a video and tell you how to find the right stability of destroyer for you. The most popular destroyer out there right now and has been for years is is this, the Paul Macbeth 4 times Star Destroyer. There are a lot of comments I see online that are related to this destroyer. People asking how its stability compares to new runs like the Waisaki destroyer or how it compares to old runs like first run destroyers, pre-flight number destroyer like the one I'm holding here, uh, two line AJ, three line AJ, and that is a misconception that I'm hoping to discard by making this video. Just recently, after feeling and testing a lot of different destroyers and taking measurements on them, I figured out that to think of the Paul Macbeth 4 time destroyer run as a singular stability is a huge mistake. Um, the stability varies massively within this run, and, and maybe some of you know that, but if you do, then you've been keeping it a secret uh, because it's not common knowledge. Uh, I got hooked on destroyers with this one. This was purchased around 2008. Uh, I know that I was playing with it mid-2008. It's a patent number, pre-flight number, Star Destroyer. It's inked Star D on the back, and it flies am amazing. Uh, after not using it, not playing at all really for years and years, I came back and this disc just flew so well that I really wanted to find something to replace it. it. It's an ace disc. I had basically retired it and was hesitant to keep throwing it because I knew that I couldn't replace it. So, you know, the logical thing to do was to go out and buy a current run of Destroyer, which was this pink one right here. Um, it's it's wiped, you know, so it's really hard to see, but it does have the, the four times stamp, or did have the four times stamp on there. It is a little bit of an older one. Uh, it doesn't have Destroyer embossed on the back, instead it's inked Star DS. And this is an absolute meat hook. I hated it. I just can't throw this thing far at all, even at 158 grams. It's super lightweight. I just couldn't throw this thing. And I think some of you can relate to that. Once I had thrown this Destroyer, I had basically written off all of the Paul Macbeth four time destroyers as being too overstable. And then I went searching. I threw uh, Outlaws, I threw, um, what's it called, Defenders and um, Enforcers. And I, I mean, I tried all kinds of different discs, right? But no, nothing, never came close to this, you know. Um, maybe the closest thing I found was some overstable sheriffs. They could do close to what this did, but they still didn't have the torque resistance of this. So, I don't know. I, I was sad and then uh, happy because I found out some information that I'm about to show you. So, this all came about when I started picking up some of the Ricky Destroyers. I ordered three of them right when they came out. And... When I got those three, I noticed that two of them were the same, or very similar, and it was these two burgundy ones. The one that we're actually looking at the picture of, which is number one, and then the burgundy one, which is number three here. Um, those are two of the three that I received, and the third one was this salmon-colored one down here. Now, what really sh showed off as soon as I got those was that they were different discs. And my initial reaction was... Innova's putting out these Waisaki destroyers from two different molds. You can see uh, I used a rivet here to help in these pictures. That's a nice straight line uh, that contrasts the curve of the bottom of the wing. And then I measured the distance from the rivet uh, to the lowest point. And as you can see highlighted up here, that's 0.64 millimeters. So we'll go all the way down the bottom of the list. 
and yeah, that looks like a completely different disc. That's not even a destroyer, right? I wrote in here that it's zero millimeters because it's touching, but technically that would be a negative. Um, you can see it's not touching down here, so this point of the disc is actually higher than the tip of the wing here, so that would be a negative. This is the understable end of the spectrum um, for the Ricky Destroyers. So that stood out massively, like of course, you can, I, you know, I just felt it when touching the discs. I then went to a second online retailer and ordered more, more Waisaki Destroyers. I went to two local shops and picked up more Waisaki Destroyers. And out of the 10 that I ended up with is what gave me the, the full spectrum here. So instead of blasting through them, we'll, we'll all go through it a little bit slower. So this first one, the most overstable at 0.64, that's quite a large gap. That gap is 0 0.53, 0 0.51, 4, 4, 2, 5, 1, 7, 1, 3, and then the 0. So within the Waisaki Destroyer, there, there's a spectrum of stability. And if you're walking into the shop and picking up discs and looking at the wing, it's, it's hard to notice um, the subtle differences. But if you just feel them, feel one disc next to the other, you're much more likely to pick up the subtlety. So if you want a more understable destroyer, you want to pick one up that's closer to flat. And if you're looking for a you know headwind destroyer, is more overstable, then you want something with way more curve to it. This spectrum of stability is not unique to the Waisaki destroyers. In fact, I believe it exists in every run of Destroyer. I have not tested every run, so that's kind of a bold claim, right? Uh, I have tested quite a few, though, at least of what's uh, currently available. I've gone through Paul Macbeth four times. There are new Rickies. I've looked at the Anthon Shimmer, the which is the new run. Brinster Shimmer, brand new. Philo Color Glow uh, Champion, that's not Star Plastic, Destroyer from a while back. And then the current Champion Glow run with the Vegas stamp on them, CFR, or whatever, fundraiser disc. And every one of those that I just listed has a similar deviation to what I just showed you with the Ricky Destroyers. I haven't bought 10 of each of those discs, uh, um, not not anywhere close to that so I don't have proof I can't show you the full spectrum but I found them in the middle of the spectrum and low side and high side and, and so forth so with the current embossed Paul Macbeth four times I've got four discs to show you here these these are all brand brand new discs that I picked up locally um, this white one is a beefcake. You can see how big that gap is. That's 0.67. There's an orange one at 0.48, orange at 0.26, and then this yellow abomination. <laughs> it po I wrote 0 0.00, but you can see that would be well into the negative. Look how far it lifted that off. Um, I mean, it looks like a completely different disc, right? What? I found in particular on this yellow one that we're looking at is if I'm holding the disc with the stamp pointing upward, the left side is the side that I can feel that big curved high bubble. If I feel the right side, it's actually flat. So this disc tipped me off that not only do I need to do a measurement at one point on the rim, if I want to find the stability of the disc, but I need to be looking at multiple points around the disc. So I erased all my data and started over. And what I've shown you so, so far is the finishing numbers that I wrote down. Once I realized that the rim changes shape from one side to the other, I started um, setting the rivets at three different points around the rim and then doing three measurements each and averaging that 
Um, that's consistent except for the ones where I wrote zero and that's just because I didn't want to mess with having to figure out how to measure a negative. Um, so every every single destroyer that I've tested has a different depth gauge on that wing at different points around it. So there's massive, massive inconsistencies in how these destroyers are coming out. And I'm curious if this is just something that comes up with destroyers, and perhaps it's because of how many destroyers are made and how fast they're trying to churn them out, because I really want to believe it has something to do with cooling. So if they're pulling them out fast before they've really set in place and the plastic is still soft, and then they're being set vertical, it kind of makes sense that gravity could pull that plastic down and make it swell a little bit on the bottom more than the top, which is why we've got a different bulge on one side versus the other. Um, I don't know enough about how they manufacture these to say whether that's true or not, but I think that I'm probably close to being correct. And, uh, you know, other people have talked about humidity and, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's really hard to say. I think that Innova knows that they have this problem. And I think that so many people buy destroyers that Innova doesn't have to worry about fixing it. And to, to be honest, for me, it's not a bad thing. It means that with any of the current runs of destroyers, whether they're Paul Macbeth or whether they're Ricky or, you know, whether it's a CFR destroyer, um, you know, I've looked at what's their super lightweight ones called, the bubble destroyers, whatever. Um, it, the deviation exists on those as well. Um, and, and that's all good news for me because I can go to a shop and I know that I want a destroyer close to flat on that edge. I'm up at 5,000 feet elevation. Things fly more stable here. I, I need as much help as I can get to throw a disc far. And a nice flat edge on a destroyer is what I'm looking for. You might wonder if they're coming out of different molds. And I say that because that's what I wondered. So to try to figure out how many molds there are, I began looking at the uh, the patent number, right? This is something that you guys are probably all familiar with. The picture I'm showing right now is off of this pre-flight number destroyer. Um, it's an older star destroyer that does have that patent number on the bottom. Innova lost the patent or it expired or whatever. So they began removing it from the destroyer mold. On this disc that we're looking at the picture of, that is a positive. Um, you know, if you scratch your fingernail across it, you're going to hit the edge of the P. The P is raised on patent, and all the characters are raised on the disc. So on the mold, that means it's a negative. Those numbers are indented in. So for them to get that out of the mold, they probably added material and I think it's a metal mold. They, of course, want it to last for a long time. So they've got to figure out a sustainable way to get that out. I bet that they actually welded. Um, they probably welded, you know, just using the rod, whatever, adding the metal debris in place, and then ground it away. And that is where we get to these grind marks right here. These are super hard to photograph, so I apologize. It's not really easy to see. I did my best. You can tell that in this picture here, this is what I call a three grind block. So there's a grind pattern going back and forth here. That's one block. And then the second block is on a different angle change. And those are both relatively short blocks. The third block is a really long one. So that is for sure a unique fingerprint for that one destroyer mold. It's a three grind block. Right here, we got a four grind block. There's a small block on the left, and then a longer one that's our second. Third one short, and then the fourth one is, is super short. That's a four grind. So it looks to me, and this is 
handling more than 50 destroyers that I've checked this on, every single one of them uh, has a three grind block or a four grind block. And, and those unique fingerprints, those two unique fingerprints exist on all of the destroyers that I've looked at, with exception of the super old ones that still have patent numbers on them. Um, so that leads me to believe that every destroyer is coming out of one of two molds. That may change, right? Like, I've heard theories that the first batch of Ricky destroyers that came out were actually leftover Macbeth destroyers that hadn't been stamped yet and Innova needed to get rid of them so they put the Ricky stamp on there and sent them out. And maybe the next round or two rounds down the line of Ricky destroyers are going to be the true Ricky destroyers. Uh, that's yet to be seen. I don't know. I do have one uh, Raptor Rider Ricky Destroyer and its bottom wing fit in the spectrum within the spectrum of the other Rickies I showed you it's actually on the low end more on the understable side but it has a massive massive dome on that thing and that could be the real Ricky run but it still has the uh, I can't remember, to be honest, whether that one is a three grind or a four grind block, but that's still what it has on the bottom. Other people have mentioned that some of these destroyers, in particular the Waisaki destroyers, have uh, made in USA embossed on the bottom. I have not seen any of these yet. Um, I've been looking and still haven't come across them. So maybe those are the true Ricky destroyers, or maybe that's yet a third mold. Um, I talked with, uh, sent message back and forth with a guy on Reddit, and I'm sorry I forget your username, but he told me the USA, he, he had USA marked on some of his Ricky Destroyers, and then he went and put a piece of paper on them and rubbed pencil on top of it, and it showed that the Made in USA was a negative instead of a positive, which means that it could be stamped on the disc after the disc has been molded, which is the same for the word destroyer. If you look at the word destroyer, that's actually a negative. Um, it's, it's been pressed down in there, so those can get marked after the fact. So the other thing I did for you guys, uh, beside take all those measurements, was I went to a field and through so that I could actually show you some flight differences. You gotta keep in mind, I am up at 5,000 feet elevation, so stuff does fly a little bit more stable here, uh, a, a good bit more stable here than it does at sea level. The first comparison is that I took out my pre-flight number destroyer and I threw it twice. My dog always tries to play fetch with me. Okay, there it goes. I know it's hard to see, so I'll kind of track it with my cursor. That came out on a hyzer and then flipped to Annie and faded over here. And then I lasered it back at, that was 414 feet. Second shot, hyzer flip again to Annie, faded out. That one, I really got a hold of 453 feet. And then in contrast, there's that pre-embossed four time. It's a lighter weight, way lighter, 158. But that thing is just such a meat hook. I like. I cannot get it to flip to Annie. You can see it flipped a little bit, but it still stayed within a hyzer, and then it just spiked out over here. That was 342 feet. I tried to force it over the second time releasing it on some Annie and it was lower, but it still just peeled out 333 feet. So right there is a great example of why people talk about these older destroyers in a way that makes them you know, so sought after, especially compared with some new four times. Because that older, that older destroyer outflew the newer McMeth four times by 72 feet and then by 120 feet in those two throws that you just watched. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, 
kind of makes the four time seem useless because it's so overstable. So then I did a similar comparison with the uh, newer, you know, brand new four times. This yellow one that we're looking at right here is the one that I marked 0 0.00 and is honestly kind of an anomaly. It's so weird from one side to the other. I do believe I got this a little high, almost nose up. Any second, there it is. I did get some turn out of it, but it's definitely nose up enough that it's going to stall super hard. Yeah, there it dumps out. That was 402 feet. Second throw, I got it even worse. Look how high that is. But it's still, look how much it still flipped. Like, even throwing that much nose up, it's going to come over here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Um, it still turned over, but then just faded out super hard. That second throw with that four times was uh, 378 feet. So now we move on to the white one. That's the most overstable of the you know current run new four times. I just can't do anything with this disc hardly. I'm really leaning on it there, but it just won't flip. It just dumps out super hard, comes over here. That's 333 feet. I get a hold of the second one a little bit better. I believe I get a little bit more Anheuser on it out of my hand. There's just no chance of Heiser flipping these. I really got to throw them on an ante. Yeah, you can see it. That one held ante for a little bit. And then there, sorry, I covered that with my cursor a little bit, but it dumped all the way over here. That was 351 feet. So comparing the most understable, which unfortunately I got on nose up, so I didn't really get the maximum out of it, and the most overstable, which I was really cranking over and getting on some Anheuser to get the most distance out of it, the yellow one still flew 69 feet and then 27 feet further than the most overstable. You know, s s same run, and they're flying, they're flying hugely different. And then the last one I've got to show you is with the new Rickies, the new Ricky destroyers. Heiser flip. I had a little bit too much hyzer on that one, so it didn't flip maximum. It's going to come out over here. Still 372 feet. The second one, I overcorrect a little bit and actually launch it under this tree branch, and it drifts out over the road back here. And then right there, we finally see it land. 459 feet. I know that was a shitty throw. Um, I wish I had got it down the middle, but... I was running out of energy, so I didn't get to film very many here. You're kind of left with, you know, just the, the few I threw. I know, I know it's not super scientific, but it at least shows you some. Moving on to the most overstable of the Ricky Destroyers, this Burgundy one. It's just an absolute meat hook. I, like, genuinely tried to throw it the same and make a hyzer flip, but there's just no way I can make those things hyzer flip. That, that came at 282 feet. So again, this one I really tried to force over, get it on an Anheuser, and it just peels out of that right away, 312 feet. So again, within the same run, the most understable to the most overstable, that understable one, that flatter rim was flying 90 feet and then 147 feet further than the most overstable. So... Um, that's pretty much all I got to say about it. I think that that's good enough. <laughs> I may have created more mysteries than problems I've solved. Uh, you know, certainly it, it sucks that Innova is so inconsistent. But it is nice to know, like for me personally, that at least I can go find the destroyer I want. I just need to feel the bottom of the wing and... I can come away with the destroyer I'm looking for. I, you know, can hardly ever buy destroyers online again, though, because I never know what I'm going to get sent. But hopefully this will help some of you 
to find a destroyer that flies a hell of a lot further than the one you've got and maybe help you find one that matches that golden destroyer you know you used to have or that you've retired so that's it thanks for watching